sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, so I started working on a watchOS 6 video a couple of weeks ago, but absent any real rumors, it was more of a wish list like some of my other early day videos, a list of missing features I think would help round out the product. Then Mark Gurman happened. And now we have proper spoilers to contend with as well. But since the rumors don't completely overlap my wish list, I'm gonna combine them, Voltron style, with what I was already working on and cover both what's coming and what I think still needs to come. So hit subscribe, blazing sword that little bell dingus so you don't miss any upcoming videos, and let's jump into it. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. May 6, 2019, Mark Gurman writing for Bloomberg. Apple is adding the App Store directly onto the Apple Watch so users can download apps on the go, making the device more independent. Now, there are still fundamental questions about the nature of watch apps that need to be sussed out, but plenty of them are already great and having them on demand, especially if you're out and about without your iPhone is even greater. It took until iOS 5 and iCloud for the iPhone to begin to break its tether to iTunes on the Mac and PC. It's taking longer for Apple Watch, but given the technical and usability constraints of a device that small, that's hardly surprising. Still, steady step-by-step -step progress in this area is terrific to see. Apple is bringing the Voice Memos app from the iPhone, iPad, and Mac, so users can record voice memos from their wrist. Apple is also planning to add Animoji and Memoji stickers to the device that synchronize from an iPhone. The watch will also get an Apple Books app for listening to audiobooks from the wrist and a calculator app. There will be two new health-related apps for the watch, one dubbed Dose, inside Apple for the pill reminders, and another called Cycles to track menstrual cycles. So about damn time. The calculator because it's just what every geek with a calculator watch expected to see on Apple Watch day one. And voice memos because for a device where voice is often a primary input system, not having voice memos was just a glaring omission. PCalc, just press record and drafts all filled the gap and can still offer valuable functionality well above and beyond the base, but covering the basics was Apple's job to begin with. Same with Notes app, which is still MIA. Apple is adding more watch face complications, which show additional snippets of information beyond just the time. There will be one that shows the status of audiobooks, another showing the battery life of hearing aids, and others that measure external noise and rain data. The more complications, also the better. I'm still hoping we see some form of dynamic, context-aware complications as well. There's a lot to be said for spatial permanence, where we always know exactly where to look to get exactly what we need. Weather, for example, always being top left on the display means we never have to waste time or stress over finding it exactly there when and as we need it. But other complications you may just want or need in specific situations, like the workout app every morning or whenever you arrive at the gym. Maybe the outer ring of infographic could be static and the inner complications dynamic. I don't know, but I'd love for Apple to experiment with this and figure it out. The company is also planning several new watch faces, a gradient face that makes a gradient look out of a color that the user chooses, at least two new X-large faces that show jumbo numbers in different fonts and colors, a California dial that looks like a classic watch face and mixes Roman numerals with Arabic numbers, a redesigned solar analog watch face that looks like a sundial, and a new infograph subdial one that includes larger complication views like a stock market chart or the weather. The gradient Hermes face that came out earlier this spring is cool, so a general gradient face should be cool as well. So should the other ones, especially the X-Large, because you can never have enough accessibility. I know some people still want custom third-party watch faces for the App Store, but that still seems as likely as custom third-party launchers for the iPhone. Never say never, but don't build up any large-scale expectational debt there either. What would work for me though, at least for now, is simply the photo face with a ton more complication options, like infographic level complication options. Let me turn off any I don't want obscuring my photo and turn on all the others into anything I want. That way I could have a picture of someone I love, a Superman watch, heck, pretty much any background I want and not have to sacrifice all the useful glanceable data I need just to get it. 
As with complications, I'd also love to see some smarts with watch faces, day and night faces that switch when I get to or leave work or on a schedule, workout faces that take over when I arrive at the gym or a travel face when I hit the airport. It could be brilliant or it could be all horribly wrong, but it feels like there's a lot of room for Apple to play around with intelligence beyond just the Siri face. I've been harping on this one for over four years already, but in all that time, the Apple Watch's biggest remaining failure is in just that telling time. It's a watch that just doesn't work as a watch unless you tap the screen or twist your wrist, which means you just can't see it if your hands are full, and you have to be all wicked obvious about it if you're in polite company and would prefer to be discreet. Now, always on displays, even ultra low power ones, even on OLED display technology can hit a battery hard. Batteries are the currency of mobile, and every feature we get, we pay for in battery life. So far, Apple has chosen to spend battery life on things like faster launching apps and better wireless communications. But for a product that's literally named a watch, rebudgeting on current hardware or adding in future hardware, enough headroom for an always on display seems like more than just a nice to have at this point. Likewise, you can get sleep tracking apps for Apple Watch and they integrate into the health app, which is great, but there's no built-in functionality for it and no integration with Apple's system level coaching system for breathing and moving and other pillars of a healthy, happy life. There is a bedtime mode on the iPhone, but it only tells you when to sleep and when to wake up. It has no idea if or how you slept during those periods. Adding sleep tracking data from the watch would only improve it. Comfort is another consideration, but I think the sport loop is already comfortable enough. Like I've said before, it's basically the watch equivalent of yoga pants. Charging is also an issue, of course. If you're wearing your watch overnight, you can't charge it at the same time. But anyone already using it for sleep tracking is already compensating for that by, for example, charging it first thing in the morning while taking their morning shower or similar. Getting enough battery life to just keep wearing it for a few days without charging, given the feature set, probably isn't realistic, at least not anytime soon, especially since Apple keeps spending battery efficiency improvements on other features. And anything high demand, like workouts and cellular, will reduce even the most efficient watch battery. Getting an even smaller accessory, like a ring for the watch, the way there's a watch for the phone, something you can just wear to collect data while you sleep, is something already being done by third parties, but just doesn't seem like anything Apple would prioritize, at least for now. But basic sleep tracking, tightly integrated, would still be terrific. No fitness or workout rumors yet either, but there's a bunch of stuff I'd love to see here as well, like the ability to take a rest day or cheat day on activities, even if it's for travel or personal obligations, without blowing all your streaks. Also, workouts for Tai Chi and martial arts, more winter workouts, and I'm sure all of you have your own list of what you'd love to see there as well. And of course, the holy health grail, the ability to tap to share medical information with medical centers, so we never have to fill out forms or histories, list out medications or allergies, or waste any time at all when we're in desperate need of attention. That's probably years off and will require partnerships and privacy safeguards of massive proportions. But when I hear Tim Cook say that, one day Apple's biggest contribution will be to health, that's the kind of stuff I see coming. And if you wanna help build that better, brighter future, check out Brilliant. Brilliant offers dozens of interactive courses, including ones on algorithms and machine learning that you explore on your commute, while traveling, or just about anywhere, even offline. Download any of their dozens of interactive courses through the mobile app, and you'll be able to solve fascinating problems in math, science, and computer science, no matter where you are or how spotty your internet connection is. What's particularly awesome about these courses is that they're totally interactive. You'll experiment with pendulum clocks to master the physics of motion, use rockets to model algebraic functions, and learn probability by playing casino blackjack. Yeah, blackjack. So if you want to support Vector and get unlimited access to all of Brilliant's in-depth math and science courses, you can head on over to brilliant.org slash Vector and get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Every year on the year, watchOS has been getting new features focused around timekeeping, communication, fitness, and health. Tim Cook gets up on the Worldwide Developers Conference stage, talks about what Apple has been doing with the watch, and then hands off to head of watch software, Kevin Lynch, to talk about what they'll be doing next. Or yeah, brutally tease a teleportation feature no one outside of Apple has gotten to even try yet. Why Kevin, why? This year, kicking off on June 3rd, WWDC 2019 should be no different, and I'll be there to bring it all back to you, live. So hit like if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, and then hit me up in the comments to let me know, what do you wanna see from watchOS 6 this year? Thank you so much for watching, and see you next video.